And we're going to talk to direct, director Chris Long about his movie Penitentia. He is here to discuss the film with us on the Film Threat Livecast today. Chris, thank you for joining us on the show. Tell us, how's it going? And thank you for your patience. Thank you for your well, patience. Uh, you know, I, I don't want to, I'm, I'm, I feel bad that I'm, you know, butting in on your Ahsoka jam here. No, that's all right. That's all right. We yeah, can, please. <laughs> we need a break from it. You're actually our savior at this point. Uh, tell, <laughs> tell us, tell us about Penitentia. So Penitentia is an independent feature film that I shot. Um, we shot it in Missouri and Kansas. It's about a young attorney who takes on a pro bono prison rights case and gets drawn into um, a world of corruption and corporate negligence. And the main character really has to kind of come to terms with what type of attorney he wants to be when he's confronted with both the criminality and the corporate negligence of the prison system in America. So this is a, a, a fictional narrative, but is it based on any real life event or loosely based? So, um, so my father was a civil rights attorney for 50 years in Wichita, Kansas. Wow. And when he passed, um, I was going to his funeral and, and I, I really wasn't up for speaking at his funeral, but I, but I decided that I wanted to do something that kind of honored his memory and what he really cared about and what he dedicated his life for. And so that's kind of the, the, the germ of the idea for Penitentia. And then over the next couple of months, I started to write it. And then about four months after that, we went into production. Uh, first of all, that's really fast. I mean, that is really, I mean, a lot of stories I hear with indie filmmakers is it, I thought of the idea and then 11 years later, I came up with like, I, you know, I mean, that's insane. Um, a question before we go to questions from our audience, I have to ask, how did you pull together the funding for this film? So we did a couple of things. Um, so we did some crowdfunding. It wasn't, you know, the crowdfunding wasn't significant, um, but it was something. And then um, I went to a few private investors and raised some money with that. I own a, um, a commercial production company. I've been doing that for about 25 years. And so I, I have access to, you know, I own equipment, I own cameras, I own grip trucks. So, so that really mitigated a lot of the cost of the filmmaking process. But, but I mean, we made it for $120,000 and this was a SAG feature film. So we shot it in 15 days. So that's, that's kind of, that's how we did it. And it was a little bit crazy, but you know, that's how we kept the cost out. Did you do the SAG indie contract? I did. Okay. So a lot of people don't know about this to the filmmakers there, and especially to Epic Mike, who may or may not still be in the chat. Um, there is a separate, completely different contract that as an indie filmmaker, you can do. You can look up SAG Indie or go to sagindie.com. I believe that the site is still up. Uh, the contracts are actually literally right in the site. It allows you as a filmmaker to hire any SAG actor to be in your movie. What it does, and there are different levels depending on budget level, you are giving up some power to the actors. If the And, and, and I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, Chris, um, one of the things in the contract is that if you, if the SAG actor doesn't approve of the movie, you can't even release it. And I know this for a fact because I saw a movie starring Leonardo DiCaprio in the late 90s that was made, or it was the late 90s, early 2000s, it was made under the SAG Indie contract, and the movie never came out. And I met the filmmaker, and Leo DiCaprio was there. This is when he was like this young, hot thing, and the movie was the movie was not great. I'm not going to lie. It was sort of a mumblecore thing, and Leo DiCaprio looked at it and said, I don't want people to see it. I have never seen that movie since. I don't even know if it's on his IMDb, but it was. it played the Slam Dunk Film Festival. If I remember correctly in the late nineties and he was hot all from the Titanic. So um, can you correct me about the SAG indie contract? That I don't, I don't think that that's the case, especially if you, if you have performance agreements, I mean, you have to make sure that you get all your contracts in order. So, but, right. but, but, but I will, I will say one thing about, about the SAG agreement and working with SAG actors, the fact that I had professional actors allowed me to shoot this in 15 days. 
if, if, if I had unprofessional amateur actors and we're struggling through online, so not off book, you know, we're, we're, we're not getting performances right, that would have killed the timeline. But because I had seasoned professional actors, that allowed us to move so quickly. Yeah, it's it's um just having made done projects with SAG actors, it's incredible. I mean, it's incredible when you have a SAG actor that can like just go through lines of dialogue, pages of dialogue, and do it a little differently or give you a different take on something or make sure they remember certain actions and motions. There really is a reason that um actors are uh the ones at the top of their game are in SAG. It's it's a joy to work with them. So, uh, and I've been fortunate to have that experience on a couple of projects myself. So you're right. 15 days and 15 days is about what you need to make a decent feature. Sure. Could you make a movie in a week? Yes. But you know, a little over two weeks is preferred. I made a, a feature in 18 days. Um, what are some of the, like, before we get to, we got some comments and questions from people watching, uh, live before we get to that, what are some of the things that you would like, I mean, when people, when you say out the, out loud, the words made the movie for a little over a hundred grand, people think that's a lot of money. First of all, when it comes to making films, it's not, especially a narrative film. Okay. I made attack of the doc for about a hundred thousand dollars all in that's legal. That's clearances. That's, and there's a lot of stuff we didn't pay for, you know? So, uh, but what would be your advice on making a movie at that budget level? Well, I mean, I think I would focus on trying to keep the scope of the film as small as possible. So that really allows you to have a smaller crew. It allows you to have less, um, less locations, less company moves. You could work with the, you know, with a smaller crew as well as a cast. Um, I will say that I did not do that. <laughs> um, so, so, so I, I, I didn't drink my Kool-Aid in that regard. Um, but, but. I do have the advantage of, you know, having almost 30 years of, you know, um, production experience. So I was able to kind of figure out what corners I could cut that doesn't, you know, basically blow up in my face. The other thing is, um, and it, when people have asked me for advice, uh, I, I always like the two things that add production value to a movie cast, which you had SAG actors. And location. Where did you shoot? So we shot in two places. We shot on St. Louis, Missouri, and then we shot in Wichita, Kansas. The film is based in Wichita, which is, you know, I mean, that that's that's the, the city that my father loved. Um, by filming in Wichita, we really had an access to a community that really embraced the film. And so 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 we got a lot of gifts. We got a lot of locations and we were going into live locations. So that allowed us to basically not get bogged down with a whole lot of set dressing, a whole lot of production design, which can suck up time, suck up budget. And if you don't do it properly, can really take the viewers out of the film and they don't believe it. Gotcha. Uh, we have a bunch of questions and comments from our audience. Let's go to those questions. If you, I'm sure you're, I'm sure you're okay with it. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Hieronymus says law movie, sign me up. And immortal Remus says question for Chris being an independent filmmaker today. Did you shoot on 35 millimeter or digital? And did you have a preference for what format you wanted to use? So I shot on digital. Um, I shot on digital for a couple of reasons. One is a very simple reason. I own the cameras um, and I do all of all of my commercial work on, on digital. Um, I shot when I was in college, I shot an indie feature um, on, on film on 16 millimeter black and white film. And that was the cheapest film you could get. But the problem is, is with that, even back then, and, and you know, if you're not in L.A., you know, getting dailies, being able to, you know, see what you shot quickly, that that becomes that becomes a, a problem for indie filmmakers. But then it's also just so much more expensive to shoot on 35 versus digital. And, and for me, what I look at, I'm, I'm not really an iconoclast when it comes to the image. What's most important to me is 
does the story make sense? So I'm not going to get really bogged down into, into the te technicals of the lenses or what cameras or what film stock. I, I'm, I'm much more practical in the regard of like getting the narrative down, making sure that the audience isn't taken away because I'm, I'm so geeked out on some sort of effect or some sort of, you know, technical aspect that 95% of my audience isn't going to pay attention to anyway. The, the, the uh, other thing that I would point out when it comes to shooting digital is that you can actually, uh, in the color correction phase of making a movie, you can make it look like a particular film stock. For example, the, this film I produced years ago called My Big Fat Independent Movie, we used the same cameras that George Lucas used to shoot uh, Star Wars Episode Two, which was the first all digital shot Star Wars movie, and what George Lucas did, I, I remember because I have read. I'm sure you've read Chris uh, American Cinematographer magazine. Love that magazine. Um, what he did was so he shot it digital, but he made it look like the same film stock that he used. He added grain that wasn't there to make it look exactly like the film stock from when he shot the original Star Wars film, uh, the, the scenes that were set on Tatooine in Tunisia. So just because you're shooting digital doesn't mean you can't make it look like film. Yeah, so I shot a short film uh, about 10 years ago about the House of Un-American Activities, um, about Bertolt Brecht, the playwright. And we shot it digital, but then we went through in the in the color grade and we added a ton of grain we did black and white and the reality is is that you look at some of that stuff and then you look at archival footage and it's it's hard to differentiate between those yeah yeah it's Ooh. just um yeah. it gives you so much latitude i'm sorry alan i cut you yeah, off. yeah let me ask you one question about the story but it, your father it's inspired by your father was he more the ali character or the marvin character and maybe you so want to lose me was, on that bit yeah, so, so the story actually centers around a young attorney, Ale Viacano, and um, Ale is a young up-and-coming attorney. He has a mentor, Marvin Weissman, and Marvin Weissman is the character that my father is based off of. But, but Ale, when he was in law school, had clerked under Marvin, but has now taken a job at, um, at a corporate firm. Um, Marvin is famous for taking on these pro bono cases that basically no one else wants to touch. Um, and so, and so Ali gets drawn into a case um, that, you know, through Marvin and that's, that's really how Ali starts to really has this, this crisis of conscious of like, what type of law do I want to practice? Do I want to be like Marvin or do I want to chase, you know, the, the, the corporate dream and be a really successful attorney? And we have another question here from our chat. Uh, well, we've got a couple more. And then we have we have another guest waiting in the wings, uh, uh, Mr. John Garcia, who will be joining us momentarily, uh, probably the next five minutes. But we've got three questions here. Um, let's see. Akanika asks, what was the feeling on the last day of filming on set? Um, you know, it was it was mixed. It was a mixed feeling because we had gone through a lot of uh, there, there was a lot of production challenges. I mean, we had we were filming in the middle of that the, um, Omicron um, surge. So we had we had one person that caught COVID and shut down production for 10 days, really jammed everything up. Um, so so we were like trying to slam through a whole lot. Then we were also dealing with crazy Midwest weather. So that had changed a whole bunch of schedules. So, so there's this sense of relief, but at the same point, we also knew that we would have to come back in a couple of months to, um, to do some pickups. For me, I felt there was just an emotional exhaustion because it is a gauntlet. Another question here from Greasy Guido. Did you visit any prisons for research? If so, what was it like? Um, you know what? I didn't visit any any prisons. Um, most of my research was, um, you know, secondhand research. We, we did film in a jail. Um, we we actually walked through. Um, we had access to an abandoned prison that was initially going to be one of our sets, and and you know, I mean, they're they're pretty creepy. 
I'm just going to say that. It's definitely not someplace I want to be outside of a film set. Well, prison is one thing, but have you ever stayed at a courtyard Marriott? <laughs> They're not, I mean, uh, you know. Uh, is something even, similar there? They yeah, the continental breakfast. Not, not yeah, there. yeah, continental <laughs> breakfast, which is like a, a sad pastry with an expiration date two years in the future, which is always suspicious. And a final question here from a Mr. Solomon Thornton says, greetings, Sir Chris. I guess you've been knighted now. Uh, any advice for beginning filmmakers? You know, I mean, that's such a broad, it's, it's such a broad thing because I mean, what is a beginning filmmaker? I mean, it, it, what I, the biggest thing that I would say is, is that just work on films find productions, volunteer, you know, if, if, if you're, if you're a film student, work on everyone's film. If you're not a film student and you just, you know, when you just want to get involved, start finding short films that are being shot, just start working on that. And that's where you build the network, but that's also kind of how you get into it. I mean, the first film I ever worked on was a film called Grinders that was shot in 1994. And Natty Labatique was the DP of that. And that was oh, I know Matty Blavatique. Uh, yeah, Matty, yeah. he's, inc- I mean, that guy is one of the most talented. Yes, I, yeah, uh, sorry. Yeah, and, and, and that was the first film I ever worked on. I just happened to walk on and, you know, when I was checking it out through a friend and they're like, hey, you want to work? And I said, yeah. And, and that's the first film I ever worked on. Wow. And uh, we have uh, the website for the film uh, up here, Pen- Penitentia dot com which you actually got the you actually got the name of your movie so congratulations with that and a, a quick comment here from raymond Britton white says just watch the trailer the quality is impressive for the budget well done sir what story is next or will there be a sequel well i mean i've got two films that that i'm in development on uh, one greg's going to rehab which is in the 80s coming of age story and then i have a film called liberty which we shot as a short film and that's playing a tall grass film festival as well, but we're looking to develop that as a feature. So I, I'm, I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to keep myself busy and trying to get as many projects off the ground as possible. Well, congratulations, Chris, on the film, go to penitentia.com. We'll have the link in the description after the show. We'll put the link in there and you can find a review on filmthreat.com. Awesome. Well, thanks, guys. I really appreciate talking with you. Thank you. Take care. Have a good rest of your day.